be reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 23. Got a funny story to tell. Uh, I had got this message a couple of weeks ago and uh, was going to preach it this past Sunday. And uh, we had visit Brother Ronnie come visited us, and uh, he, he and I got talking, and he said the Lord had put a message on his heart. And I said, well, I'll get you to preach this Sunday. They had a busy weekend and all. And uh, I told he got up to preach, and he said Psalms 23, and started reading. I looked over at Brother Kevin, and I said, that's exactly what I was going to preach. And he said, the Lord knew. I said, the Lord just wanted him to preach it. And I said, okay, I don't know how to take that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But uh, he went a different way with it, and uh, the Lord put this on my heart. Psalms chapter 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. And God, I'd ask, Lord, that you just minister to needs here today. Lord, such an awesome anointing in the house, and the Spirit moved, touching hearts. And God, I believe you gave me this word for this time. Minister today to us, and we'll give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. Church, say amen. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to minister in this thought. The God of the mountain is still our God in the valley. The God of the mountain is still our God in the valley. Debbie and I used to sing a song in church that was recorded by the gospel group, the McCameys. And it was called, The God of the Mountain is the God of the Valley. And the chorus goes like this. For the God of the mountain is still God in the valley. And when things go wrong, he'll make them right. And the God of the good times is still God in the bad times. The God of the day is still God in the night. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I serve a God that's an on-time God all the time. Amen. No matter what I'm going through, no matter what I'm facing, no matter if the sun is shining or if the night is dark, God is an ever-present help in a time of trouble. He does not lie. He said he'd never leave me, never forsake me. He is my strength. He is my comfort. He is my peace. He is my joy. He is my healer. He is my Savior. He is everything. He is my deliverer. He is my salvation. He's always there to help. He's always always there to minister. He's always there to pick me up. Where could I go but to the Lord? I'm so glad that I know that my God is with me on the mountain and he's with me on the valley. When others leave me, when others walk away, God said, I'll never leave you. I'll stay with you. I'll help you. I'll be there. Thank God we serve a God like that. Somebody shout glory. Sometimes as Christians, we are with God on the mountain. Everything looks like it's all right. Everything's going well in our life. But we got to realize that sometimes in life we have to walk through valleys. But know this. The God we serve, the God of the mountain, is also the God of the valley. And when people can only go with us so far, we serve a God who will go with us all the way. And the Word of God says over and over again, when it talks about valleys, it says as they were passing through the valley. It never said that as they went into the valley. It said as they were passing through the valley. Because, see, to, be, to have a valley, you got to have two mountaintops. And you'll be on one mountain, you got to pass through the valley to get to the other mountaintop. And God never said, I'm leading you in the valley and leaving you in the valley. But when you come down off of that mountain and you go in that valley, just know know it's a process of time and you're going to be lifted up again and be happy again have joy again come on it might not feel like it right now but God is the God of the mountain and the valley and there's a mountain waiting on the other side of that valley you're in right now sometimes in life we face questions and we have our emotions just in a turmoil 
We have fears and our frustrations during the hard times. We struggle to process everything that's happening all around us in our time when we are in our deepest valley. Am I talking to anybody here today? And what the McCameys were singing in the song and what David was saying in the 23rd Psalm is that God is both transcendent and imminent. Transcendent and imminent. What does it mean when God says that he is transcendent? It means God sees all things and knows all things. See, that's a problem we have. We, when we're on the mountain and we go in the valley, we just can't see our way through this. We don't know how we're going to make it through this. We, we, we try to get the answers and we try to figure it out. And everything we think that God is going to do, everything we think that we can do, or everything we think somebody else can do to help us get through this situation in this life, this valley that we're going through, this time of turmoil that we're going through, everything that we think is going to work out sometimes seems like it just doesn't work out. It seems like the valley is long and the valley is hard and, and we're going through it for a long time. But thank God. God, God is the God of the mountain and the God of the valley. And He is transcendent. He sees everything. He knows everything. He knows the end from the beginning. And God knows you're coming out. God knows you're going back to the mountain. God knows you're going to have joy again. God knows you're going to be have peace again. You're going to be happy again. You may not see how, but God knows how. And God will make it happen in your life. Because God is transcendent. God sees everything and God knows everything. He knows tomorrow. He sees tomorrow. He sees a month from now. He sees a year from now. He sees a decade from now. He sees a century from now. God sees and knows everything. Sometimes we can't figure it out. We don't know what we're going to do. But God's got the answer. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. God has got your answer. God is transcendent. And he sees all things. And knows all things. David said this. He leads me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Because God knows the end from the beginning. Notice there he said, God leads me. God leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And sometimes we have to go through the valley. But one thing about it, we're not walking alone. You might feel like there's nobody there with you. You might feel like you're all alone. You might say, God, where are you? But I'm here to tell you, God is not a liar. He said, I won't leave you. I won't forsake you. He's got a hold of you. Just follow him. Trust him. You're coming out. God's going to help you. Hold on. God will bring you out. Because God knows your end from your beginning. From a transcendent perspective, God knows how it all works together. And see, that's our problem. We don't see how this could ever work for our good. We don't understand how that what we're going through, the valley we're going through, and the battle we're going through, and the trial we're going through. God, how could this ever work to my good? Right now, I don't see nothing good about it. It is destroying my life. It is tearing up my mind. My emotions are all tore up. God, I don't see anything good coming out of this. But I'm here to tell you, God has got an answer for you, and God is going to bring good out of this. Because everything worked together for the good of them. They love the Lord. Hold on. Hold on. God. Is going to bless you through this. And like the old hymn we used to sing, farther along we'll know all about it. Farther along we'll understand why. How can that be? Because God is transcendent. He is above all, and he is beyond all, and he knows all. And what you can't figure out and what you can't make sense of, I'm here to tell you, God knows that this is good for you. And in the long run, working with everything else, it's going to work out, and things are going to be better. Come on, church. Come on. Hold on. Hold on. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. Because God is transcendent, and he knows what is ahead, what turn we should take, what door we should go through, what road we should walk down. God knows everything about us, and he knows what's good for us, and he knows how to lead us. God is on the deck viewing our life from a distance, from beginning to the end, watching us when we're going in the right direction, and watching us when we're heading down the wrong direction, trying to get us to get in step and follow him and go the right way. I'm here to tell the church today, if you're looking for help, don't look no farther than Jesus, because can't no 
nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody help you like the Lord. Hold on. Hold on. God is making a way in this battle you're in. He's there with us on the mountaintop. And He never, ever left you when you entered the valley. He promised us that I will never, somebody shout never, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. You may not see Him, you may not hear Him, you may not feel Him, and we may not understand Him. But one thing about it, He's an on-time God, and God is going to make a way. God is, come on church, God's going to bring you out. Hold on, hold on. God is working it all toward your good. Because God knows exactly what we need. Thankfully, He has given His Word to guide us through the maze of life to ensure that we find our way through time into eternity and into His presence. Too often we walk around lost with a map right in our hand. We got the Word of God to lead us and guide us, the Spirit of God to lead us and guide us. But here's the problem. We got the map right in our hand, but we want to be led by our flesh. We want to figure this thing out. We want to tell God how it's going to work out. We want to try to make the changes. We want to solicit people to help us. We want to get somebody else to get us through this thing. But let me tell you, there's no greater help for what you're going through today. I don't care what it is. God is your help. God is a way maker. God is a deliverer. And can nobody do you like Jesus can do you. And I'm thankful for a transcendent God. I'm thankful for a God that sees everything. He sees what I'm going through right now, and he sees what I'm going to go through tomorrow. He knows what I'm going to go through next week, a month from now, and a year from now. God sees it, and he knows all about it. And God understands. And I'm thankful that he's a transcendent God who knows my end from my beginning because that lets me know that his hand is upon my life. It might look like that God is not taking care of me, but God has got his hand on my life, and he's going to watch over me. And I'm going to put my faith, and I'm going to put my trust in God. I don't understand it. My emotions are all tore up. I'm tore up inside, and the enemy is fighting me on the right and on the left. But I will walk after the Lord. I will follow after the Lord. I will trust after the Lord. Because God knows all about it. And He understands why. If God was not transcendent, then He would just be not even a God. He would just be someone trying to tell us what to do, but having no clue of how it was ever going to turn out. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus is God. And He said in His Word that I was touched by the feeling of your infirmity. And that battle, that struggle, that trial, that test, that turmoil that you're going through in your life, you are not going through it alone. But God is touched by the feeling of your infirmity. He feels what you're going through right now. You may not can comprehend in your mind that God can feel what you're going through right now. Because you think, God, if you feel it, why have you not moved? But God is working in your life. We don't understand, but God does. God does. And He works everything according to His will and for our own good. But what we got to do is have faith and say God I will trust you though you slay me I will trust you because God you know what's best for me in my life and God I'm going to trust you through what I'm going through because you are God and you are touched by the feeling of our infirmities no other false God came down and was smitten like Jesus was and felt the things that he felt but he did it so he could be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. And God knows our thoughts from afar off. He knows the very thoughts and the meditation of our heart. If your spouse knew everything you thought about them, I wonder how much they'd stick around. I wonder if the pastor knew everything you thought. Your best friend, your neighbor, knew everything that you ever had a thought about them would stick around. But there is nobody going to stick with you closer than a brother than Jesus. He sticks around. He sticks around. And you know what? He don't get mad at you. He don't get mad at you because you think those things. Because he's touched by the feeling of your infirmity. He walked in a body of flesh. He felt the pain. He felt the betrayal. He felt the trial. He felt the temptation. He felt death. He felt this. He felt it all. He was touched by the feelings of your infirmity. So he don't get mad at you 
when you're confused in your mind, when you're going through things, you begin to question him about his motives and begin to question him about where he's at and why he isn't moving in your life. Because God is standing back smiling and saying, if you could just see the big picture like I see the big picture, you know this is going to work for your good in the long run. When it's all said and done, it's going to be better. Well, what about the passing of our dear sister Ro? And this is a message isn't about her. But I want to tell you, it's working out for our good because she's with God. And one day, I'll be with him and I'll be with her. It all, it all, it all, it all works for our good. And in his timing, God is. Somebody shout God is. God is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and he is the end. All at the same time. Who else could do that? He's the beginning. And he's the end, and he's everything in between. For us, we got a beginning, and we're trying to get to the end. And it's like we're blind trying to get there. But I will go by faith. I walk by faith. I let the Word of God lead me. I let the Spirit of God lead me. Because if I get to my flesh, I lose direction, and I don't know where to go. But if I walk in the Spirit, walk in the Word, trust God, hold His hand, God will bring me through. Because He's a transcendent God. And he knows where I'm going. And he leads my steps. And so I follow him. And God walks through time like we walk through a room, one to another. Before we get there, he's already been there. Before we, there was a problem, he already knows the answer. Before the foundation world, before Adam sinned, God already had a cross plan for a Savior to be sent. God's word said that a lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. God had a plan. That sin should be remitted by the shed blood of a spotless lamb. To the carnal mind, it makes no sense. But when Jesus was on the cross and he said, it is finished, all heaven and hell knew it meant sense. And that's what you got to know here today. That thing that you're going through that don't make no sense in your life, if you'll hang in there and trust God, there's going to come a day when God's going to say, it is finished. Your battle is over. Your trial is over. Your struggle is over. All that you're going through is over. And it's making sense now. All of a sudden you can see how he was with me all the time. He was there all the time. Thank God for transcendent God who knows my end from the beginning. And then it's going to all make perfect sense to us when we get there. Somebody shout, when I get there, it's going to make sense. What you're going through may not make sense today. But in God's plan for your life and in God's perfect will, that valley that you're going through has a reason and it has a purpose in your life. Because you see, we got a problem. We are stubborn flesh. And we are stinking flesh. Like I said, you don't believe me? Leave off your perfume, your aftershave, your deodorant. Don't brush your teeth. And you find out flesh stinks. And flesh left to itself unattended begins to stink. That's why I can't let my flesh just go any way it wants to go because it will stink. It don't care how good I think it looks, how pretty I think I dress it up. People are going to back away because they're going to say, you stink. You stink. I don't want to be your conversation, your talk, your attitude. Everything about you stinks because you're going in your flesh. But if I walk in the spirit, I'll not fulfill the lust of my flesh. I'll walk in the will and the way of God and God will bring me out of my trials. God will bring me out of my struggles. God will bring me out of my valley because he's a transcendent God and he knows the way that I take and he's going to bring me out. That's why he told us in his word that all, somebody shout all, that leaves nothing out. God said all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord because God is transcendent and he is not limited by time. He's not limited by space. He's not limited by men. He's not even limited by you or the devil. He transcends our best attempts to define him. No matter what words we use or accolades to heap upon him, no matter what adjectives or adverbs we line up uh, in our praise as we lift him up, God is always more than we could ever say about him. We could tell him how great he is, how wonderful he is, how awesome he is, how faithful he is, but there are no words that we can lift up God enough to say how good God is and how great God is. God is better than anything you could ever say 
about her. God is greater than anything you could ever say about her. There is nobody like God. I said there is nobody like God who can do me like the Lord. Nobody, nobody, nobody is like God. He is better than anything we can say. I don't know how it got started, but my sister used to say, I'd say, I love you, and she said, I love you more. And I noticed that Facebook and different people talking, when you say, I love you, they'll say, I love you more. I love you more. And I could tell God all I want, I love you more. But I could never love him more than he loves me. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. We might think we love somebody more than they love us, but I'm here to tell you right now, as much as you love God, as much as you praise God, as much as you adore God, God loves you more. God loves you more. God cares about you more. Why are you letting that devil tell you? God don't care because you're going through this. If God loved you, you wouldn't be going through it. The devil is a liar. As a father, God is love. God is love. God is love. God transcends everything. And I'm God is love. And won't nobody love you like the Lord loves you. And you ought to praise Him and worship Him and hold to Him for the loving God that He is. That's why Paul said in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19, that God is exceeding in power. In Ephesians 2 and 7, Paul says, God is exceeding in power. In grace. In Ephesians 3 and 20, Paul says, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. After we have reached the limits of our thoughts, our imagination concerning the power of God, God is still exceeding and surpasses everything that our mind could ever think that God is able to do. You let the devil tell you God ain't able. What's wrong with you? God is able. God is able. God is able. Come on. Trust God. God is still able. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all, above all that we ask or think. The Greek word for exceeding is hyper, which means to go above and beyond. And God is above and beyond anything that we could even try to conceive with our infinite, infinite, finite minds. God is transcendent in knowledge, in power in presence, and in love. God goes farther than any of us can go in those areas. We can only go so far with people. We can only do so much to try to help people. But I'm here to tell you, God can go farther than anybody else. So why are you leaning on the arm of flesh instead of trusting in God? I'm here to tell you, God is your answer. God is your answer. You sitting at home pouting about it. You sitting at home crying about it. You getting on the phone telling everybody about it. Why don't you get on your knees and tell God about it? Let God work. Let God answer. Let God make the way. Because can't nobody do you like the Lord. God is able to fix what you can't fix. And God is able to fix what nobody can't fix. Because God is transcendent. God is transcendent. He's everywhere and knows everything. Transcendent in knowledge. Transcendent in power, presence, and in love. We'll never reach the margins of God, the limits of God, or the boundaries of God. As far as we look for God, as high as we reach for God, as much as we praise God, as long as we live for God, God is still more than we could ever imagine. He is greater than our, the greatest things that we could think about. Even the heavens declare his glory. We look at the majesty of the mountains, the oceans, the rivers, the seas, the beautiful sunsets, beautiful sunrises, and we think of God and we adore God. But God said, you ain't seen nothing yet. I have not seen. He has not heard. Neither has it entered in the heart of man. The things that come on, church. It'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. Hold on. Hold on. Trust God. Trust God. It'll be worth it. Why are you thinking about giving up? Why are you thinking about letting down? God is your hope. And God is your answer. And God is able to exceed every expectation, every hope, or every need in your life. Because God is transcendent. But God is not just transcendent. He's not less than transcendent. He's able to be everywhere and know everything. But he's more than just a transcendent God. So what else is he? He's an imminent God. He sees the future, knows the future. He's there and back. The beginning, the end. The alpha, the maker. And everything in between. But he's also imminent, which means he's right here. 
right here, right here, right now. God fills everything in time and space, but he is right here, right now. He sees the sparrow that falls from heaven, and he knows every hair on our head. He knows everything about us. He knows every tear that we shed. He takes and he bottles them up, and he stores them in heaven so he can pour them out one day so we don't cry no more. I'm so glad I serve a God like that and knows my pain. He knows my hurt. He knows my struggle, but he's right here right now to hold me, to minister to me, to love me, to care. Who wouldn't want to serve a God like that? He's that close to each of us, just as close as the mention of his name. I wonder if somebody in here knows that name. Close as the mention of his name. When that car is about to go off the road and you shout Jesus and all of a sudden you don't know how it happened, but you didn't go off the road. About to hit somebody head on and you shout Jesus. Close your eyes for a second and you're going on the straight and narrow and you got a battle in your life. You shout Jesus. You didn't know how, but God made a way out of nowhere. There's nobody, nobody, nobody can do you like Jesus can. He is our help. He's our strength in a time of trouble. And he's just as close as the mention of that sweet name, Jesus. David said in Psalms 23, verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Now, who in the world, who in the world would start a sentence like that with yea? Yea! I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they come for me. You can say yea in the midst of your valley. You can say yea in the midst of your marital trouble. You can say yea in the midst of the sickness in your body. You can say yea in the midst of the struggles and the battles you're going through in life. When you know this one thing, that the transcendent, imminent God is still with you. He's right at your side. He's got a hold of you. He ain't going to let you fall. But he's bringing you through the valley. He's bringing you out of the valley. God will restore you to the valley. Ah, yea, though I walk. Through the valley. I'm not going to fear no evil because you're with me, Jesus. And I know your rod and your staff. They're going to comfort me till I get to the other side. There it is. There it is. Thou art with me. Even in the valley that I go through. Even the valley you're in right now. There it is. He's with you. He's with you. Do you hear me? He's with you. He's with you. But, Pastor, I don't feel you. I don't care. I'm not going by your feelings. I'm going by what the Word of God said. And God said, I'm with you. I don't care if it don't look like God's with you. I don't care if it don't feel like God's with you. I don't care. I don't care if it don't look like it's getting no better. I don't care if you're still in the valley. God is with you. And God will bring you up. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. God's right there, and he's going to bring you out. Because God knows. God knows the answers. He knows the end from the beginning. But at the same time, he came in a body of flesh to lead us and guide us, to hold our hand and to understand our fears and our frustrations. He himself knowing all the pain that we're feeling and the suffering we're going through. Because he became flesh for us to walk where we walk to hurt the hurts that we hurt so he can be touched by the feeling of our infirmity. So when we cry out to him and say, God, I need you, I'm hurting, I'm in pain, I'm suffering, it is not just a God that is afar off, but he is not just a transcendent God, but now he is an imminent God. He is Jesus Christ who came in the flesh and bore our burdens and bore our sins in his body. He cried, he felt pain, he went through all kinds of betrayal, he went through everything that you can imagine, and yet he made it, he made it, and he's here to tell you today, hold on, Trust me, I'm right here. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. I don't care what the devil said. Hold on. Hold on. You'll make it. You'll make it through this thing. I know it's a long valley. I know it's hard, but you are going to make it if you just hold on to Jesus. When we're in our darkest hour, God knows what that's like, and he knows how to bring us out. You hear me? That transcendent God has got the answer, and he knows how he's going to bring us out. 
When we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he's an imminent God. He's right there with us, walking with us always, even unto the end of the world. Sometimes we think, God, you didn't go with me all the way. You left me. He said, no, I'm going to stay with you. I'm going to go with you to the end of the world. Even when we walk away from him, he follows us to get a hold of us with a hook and bring us on back. Oh, ain't it good to serve a God like that? Isn't it good to serve a Hey, he loves me. Even when I do wrong, he loves me more than I love him. We need a God who's with us in our darkest moment, who'll steady our steps, who'll calm our troubled heart and chase away our fears. And David said this, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they come for me. With the rod, he protects us, and with the staff, he guides us and brings us into the paths of righteousness. He is the glory on the mountain, who thunders with his voice, causes the earth to tremble, and makes the hills to melt like wax in his very presence. But he's still the small voice that whispers in your ear and tells you, don't be afraid, I'm here with you, don't you worry about it, I'm going to make a way, hold on, hold on, don't give up, keep on going, I'm right here, I'm not going to let you down, come on, keep walking, get up, get up, get up, don't quit now, don't turn back, I I haven't left you. I'm right. You're going to make it. I know it's dark. I know it's long. I know it. But you're going to make it. You're going to make it. Because I'll be with you in the furnace of fire. I'll be with you in the flood. I'll be with you in the lion's den. I'll be with you in the prison. I'll be with you in the mountain. I'll be with you in green pastures. I'll be with you beside still waters. I'll be with you in the good times. I'll be with you in the bad times. I'll be with you in the hospital. I'll be with you in the valley. I'll be with you in the shadow of death. I'll be with you. I'll be with you. I'll be with you. God said, always, always be with you. Today, tomorrow, the next day, right now. I'm never going to leave you, and I'm never going to forsake you. But you just got to trust me and believe that I'm there, and I'll always be there. David said, I will fear no evil. Paul said one time, as he's talking to the disciples, he said, or to the people, he said, uh, in other words, struggle, pardon what I'm getting ready to say because this is me. This isn't God. He said, I want to give you just how I feel. And he began to talk about all the sufferings, the battles, the troubles, the trials, the beatings, the shipwrecks, everything that he'd been through. And he was talking about all that, kind of just talking a little bit different than he normally would. So listen to me right now. I'm not afraid of evil. I'm not afraid of Satan. I'm not afraid of the demons of hell. But when you see your wife or your child or your grandchild or a parent or a saint of God or any loved one lying in the hospital vent, hospital on a breather vent, it is an evil we fear. We know that God is a God of time. And God will take them home and they'll be in a far, far better place. We're not afraid that we'll lose them because we know where they'll go. We know they'll go to heaven. We know if we trust, trust in Acts 2.38, we're going to be right there with him. And we'll dwell, dwell with him forever. We can feel the Holy Ghost, the comforter that comes and strengthens us and it helps us so we know we'll survive. We know we'll make it. But what brings us to our knees and buries our head in a pillow of uncomfortable weeping is that we'll walk through the remainder of this life and they won't be there with us. It's that fear that we will not hold them their hand again or have them there to share our deepest and most sacred dreams. And regardless of how much faith you have or what level of leadership or authority one has been given, hard times are still hard. Hard times are still hard. Whether it's we lose a loved one have sickness in our body, have financial difficulties, have marital problems, out of control children, internal struggles within ourselves. The truth is this, hard times are still hard. But through it all, but through it all, but through it all, from this mountain to that mountain, there's a valley. But through it all, through it all, through it all, 
it's not that Jesus was there and leaped over there. Although Jesus is at the beginning and Jesus is at the end, he didn't send me in this valley alone, but through it all, he was right there with me. Through all the pain, through all the hurt, through all the hard time, through all the suffering, through all the tears we shed, he didn't let me go. He just didn't leap ahead of me to let me do it by myself. But the imminent God was right there with me, holding me, holding me, cradling me, crying with me. Hey, because he said, I know the beginning from the end. And after a while, it'll all be all right. Do it all. I'll be there with you. And God sent me here to tell you today that no matter the trial, no matter the test, no matter the valley that you're going through right now, know this, that the God of the mountain is still your God walking with you in the valley that you're in right now. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. The transcendent God who spoke a universe into existence who said, let there be light, and there was light, who put a cross on a hill called Calvary 2,000 years before it was needed. That transcendent, transcendent, transcendent God who knows our future and knows all of eternity. I praise him for that, but my heart rejoices that he's an imminent God who's here with me right now in my valley, speaking peace when hard times are hard, giving comfort when hard times are hard, encouraging me and strengthening me when hard times are hard. Let me know that bad times don't last always because the God of the mountain is still God in the valley. And between every uh, valley is two mountains. And God is not bringing me in the valley to leave me here. But every time that God spoke in the scripture, he said, as they passing through the valley, yeah, you're going through it, but you're also coming out of it. Can somebody say praise the Lord? I'm not staying here. I'm coming out of it. Yeah, it's hard. Yes, it's hurting me, but I'm not staying. I'm not staying. I'm not saying I'm coming out. I'm coming out of what I'm going through. There's light at the end of this. And I'm coming out of this. Psalms 91, it said this. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say unto the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. I will trust in Him. Surely, he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence when hard times are hard. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow, arrow that filleth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor for the destruction that wasteth is noonday. A thousand shall fall by thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh to thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is thy refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou shalt dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon. Thou shalt shall trample under your feet because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and I will honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Aren't you glad he's imminent? Aren't you glad he's with you right now? Right now. With times of heart. God is still with you. And he loves you more than you love him. And he won't hurt you. But he will only help you shield you, protect you, and deliver you. So why do we listen to the devil? And we want to bring accusation against God. Like, God, it's your fault that I hurt like I hurt. 
that I'm going through what I'm going through. This valley, this this trouble in my life. God, it's been a long time. This long time I've been struggling. I've been going through this. And, and the devil tries to make us think it's God's fault. But nobody will love you. And nobody will care for you like the Jesus will. That transcendent God that loved you over 2,000 years ago. That he died for your sins before you were even born. But they also the imminent God that's here with you right now, that if you do him wrong, even in this service, he will still love you. He'll still hold you. He'll still protect you. And he'll still get a hold of you and try to bring you back. Ain't nobody going to love you like that. Nobody will care for you like that. So why you want to give up for God? Why you want to look back now? Why you want to sit down now? You ought to rise up and say, Jesus, I'll serve you. Though you slay me, I'll trust you. I need you. I love you. I'll hold on you. I need. I need. I need you in my life. Because ain't nobody ever loved me, Jesus, like you've loved me. Our problem is we put too much value on this life. It's all about this life. This life. That the scripture has already told us that a man that is born of a woman is full of days, but full of trouble. But we put so much value on this life. When there's a life over there, there's, there's no more trouble. But in the flesh, we put so much value on this life. You want to know why you're so torn, torn right in, in your valley and why you feel like just sitting home and not going to church and you don't want to talk to nobody from the church. You're mad at God and, and you're, just, you're just angry because you're going through everything you're going You want to know why? Because you're walking in your flesh. You get in the spirit, you won't be looking at what you're going through. You'll be looking under Jesus, the author, the finisher, the alpha, the omega, the beginning, the end, the way maker. Trust, trust in the Lord. We put so much value in this life. Excuse me. This life, the scriptures already told us, is like a vapor. It just appears for a little time, and then it vanishes away. I've learned some things about God and about myself in the past couple of weeks. And what has come to pass is not something I would have chosen. And at times, I've been angry. I've been broken. Felt helpless. Even times felt let down. But through it all, through it all, ain't nobody ever loved us like Jesus. And ain't nobody ever cared for us like God. And I don't want to ever go through anything without him holding my hand and being at my side. And I don't want to run from him, but I want to run to him because I know I need him. I know I need him. I know I can't make it through tomorrow if I don't have Jesus in my life. I've been through enough yesterday and enough today to know I need him tomorrow. I need to hold on to him at any cost. If I lose everybody around me, I got to hold on to God. I can't make it without God in my life. He's my joy. He's my salvation. He's my peace. He's my cover. I can't make it without God in my life. I need Him. I need Him more than anything I need Him. Because through it all I've never doubted God's love. God's plan and God's presence. He is the God of the mountain and He's also the God in my valleys. And if you don't know God like that, if you don't know that He's your God in the mountain as well as your God of the valley, I'm here to tell you, you don't know God at all. You don't know God at all. You know church. You know the organ. You know the choir. You know the jump. You know the feeling. Let me tell you something. The sinner can feel what the saint feels. Falls on the just and the unjust. But it's when you are in the valley of turmoil, the valley of the shadow of death, when sickness wrecks your body, when, when, when your marriage is torn apart and your children are disobedient and your body is sick and you're tormented in your mind and, and your physical body is falling apart and you're going through all kinds of things that you say, though he slay me, I will trust him. He is the God of my good times and he is the God of my bad times. I will be in church. I will dance. I will rejoice. I will worship him because I need him. I need him more than anything, more than my wife, more than my husband, more than my children, more than my job, more than my health, more more than my life. I need God. I need God. No matter what I go through, I know what I need. And what I need in my life more than anything is I need God in my life. And if you don't know God like that, if you can only serve God on the mountain, 
then you will be in for a big shock because the valleys in your life are unavoidable. And you're going to have valleys. You hear me? You're going to have valleys. And you're going to have things happen to you that are just inevitable. But if you got God in your life, you can make it. And you can say, through it all, I've learned to trust in him. And God is my help and a very present help in a time of trouble. You may have faith to move mountains, but there's still going to be valleys. You hear me? Faith to move a mountain, but you're still going to have valleys. You may speak in tongues and prophesy from one end of grace into the other, but there's still going to be valleys in your life. There's going to be trials. There's going to be times of pain. There's going to be times of temptation. There's going to be times of utter frustration. And if you don't believe me, I'll tell you who you can ask. Ask Jesus. Jesus. Ask him who endured great affliction. Ask Jesus who wept over Jerusalem. Ask Jesus who wept at the tomb of Lazarus. Ask Jesus who cried from the cross, my God, my God, why? But there, here's the question for us that are here today, passing through the valley. The question is whether you will exercise the kind of faith that can sustain you when life doesn't make sense. Will you exercise the kind of faith that when you have gone from shouting the house down on Sunday to passing through valley on Monday, will you still try? Trust Him. Will you still praise Him? Will you still worship Him? Will you say, through it all, I'll stay with you. Through it all, I'll serve you. Through it all, God, you're my help, and I'll trust you through it all. And if you don't know the God of the valleys, then my friend, you don't know God at all. Because He is the God of the mountain and the God of the valleys. I'm almost done. In 1 Kings chapter 20, there's an account of a Syrian army. Filled the valley all around Israel. And the Syrian army was there fighting. In verse 27, it said this. Israel army said, like two little flocks of goats, while the Syrians filled the countryside. Two little flocks of goats, and all the Syrians filled the whole countryside, all around about. And they were getting ready to go in a battle. And here they were in the valley. Two little like two little flocks of goats against all the Syrian armies. And the Syrians looked down, and they began to gloat about how that they were going to just utterly destroy these few people that were down in the valley. But the mistake of the Syrians was that they made the statement that the God of Israel was only the God of the mountain and not the God of the valley. And we got more power We've outnumbered them. We've surrounded them. They have nowhere to go. And we're going to utterly destroy them in the valley. Because they made the assumption that the God of Israel was just the God of the mountain. It couldn't protect them in the valley. But God is not just the God of the mountain. In verse 28 and 29, it said this. Then a man of God came and spoke to the king of Israel and said, Thus say the Lord, because the Syrians have said, The Lord is the God of the hills, but he is not the God of the valleys. Therefore I will deliver all this great multitude into your hand, and you shall know that I am the Lord. And they encamped opposite each other from for each other for seven days. So it was that on the seventh day, the battle was joined, and the children of Israel killed 100,000 foot soldiers of the Syrians in one day. I want you to know that Jesus has the power to kill, put a thousand of flight, if two of us get together, put two ten thousand. Come on, church. Come on. Hold on. Hold on. God's going to bring you out. God's going to deliver. I don't care how much it looks like you're outnumbered. God will fight for God will bring you out. You just got to hold on. Hold on. Poke somebody next to you and tell them, hold on. Tell somebody else, hold on. We can't give up now. Hold on. But you know, God is able. God is able. I want to know God in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable even unto his death. I want to learn that whatever state I'm in, there will in I'll also be content. I want to learn whether I'm on the mountain or in the valley or walking through the sha- valley of the shadow of death, as long as you are the imminent God, the God who will never leave me or forsake me. Hold my hand. I know I'm going to make it through this. 
I want to know that whether I'm shouting on the mountain or whether I'm weeping in the valley, God is still God, and he's still in control. If everyone want to stand, the musicians will come. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here today, and you're in that valley in your life, it may not be a health emergency, but it could be a valley in your home, valley in your marriage, a valley with your children. Come on, this is personal. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm talking to you. It may be in your finances, maybe on the job, valley in your marriage or in your relationships with your family. But whatever valley that you are passing through, I can tell you with strong confidence today that the God you enjoyed when you were shouting on the mountain, the God you trusted when everything seemed to be going good in your life, is the same God that's with you right now in the valley that you're going through. He is the transcendent God. He knows the way that you should take, but he's also the imminent God who's here to hold you right now, hold your hand and help you and to lead you to what you're going through. And if this message is spoke to you here today, and you're walking through a valley in your life, I want to invite you to come to this altar. I want you to take your place with the Lord right here in prayer. The old hymn asked the question, where could I go? Where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to save me in the end. Where could I go? But to the Lord. Will you step out of your seat and cast your cares upon him? because he cares for you, and let him bring you up out of this valley you're going through. Thank you. Will you come? Come on, give it to God. Don't leave here with it. Don't leave here with it. Give it to him.